I wanted to put together this presentation because many of the athletes I once coached now have become adults and coach for me. And we've totally revamped and redone how we coach kids and know what we have done wrong in the past. So this is a complete overhaul presentation so that you can learn a little bit about what we've changed and what we do better now. First of all, the overall philosophy. One, most important thing, we care more about the feelings they have when they leave this building or leave the sport than they do about any gymnastics accomplishment. Most important thing ever, the Olympic medal that we have means absolutely nothing compared to the negative feelings that the elite athlete that I once coached had in going through the sport. It, it just absolutely doesn't matter what they achieve if they don't have good feelings in leaving the sport. We want none of the kids to resent their childhood. So if it becomes too grueling, too miserable, too negative, too anything, then it's not worth the time they spent in our sport. And we wanna give them autonomy over their sport. So a lot of this presentation is about older kids. It's not necessarily about the three, four, five-year-olds or kids who are just finding their way in the sport. It's the kids who are getting a little bit older and as they grow up, even at 9, 10, 11 year olds, they want autonomy over their sport. They want some choices. So very, very important that they feel in control. So what's most important? Again, we always go back to feelings. Feelings is the number one way that our business is done better, that people uh, enjoy their time in the sport of gymnastics with us at Gymcast. And so feelings, 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 most important thing. So. Anytime you're coaching a kid, you have to make sure that the feelings are taken into consideration way before whatever gymnastics success they might have. So how do you do those feelings? How do you make those feelings positive or feel good? When you're correcting a mistake, if it's about their bent legs or they're not doing something or this negative, 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 then that phrasing starts weighing on them as I'm no good, uh, I'm not very I don't, I don't even know why I'm in the sport because I'm constantly criticized and told I'm doing things wrong. Now, in the nature of coaching gymnastics, it is about trying to create, correct what was the mistake. So what we would like kids to focus on is your legs were almost straight on that one. And it has more of an uplifting and positive feel towards it than, you know, your legs were bent again and again and again. So we're trying to rephrase how we correct mistakes and if you use enthusiasm, like, oh, you could have done that. You almost held it. That helps the kids actually achieve more than it does to tell them what was wrong. The difficulty of the assignment is very important. So if you make it an assignment, that is not challenging at all. It's kind of boring. Like they feel like they're going through the motions for no purpose whatsoever. So we don't want to do that. So we want to make challenges, but we don't want to go to the point of a grueling and miserable and difficult assignment. Some of the examples I have is like some of the CrossFit type workouts. They're so extreme and so many numbers. Like when they're saying 100 chin-ups, I mean, that stuff is crazy. 300 push-ups, you know, th those numbers are not, they're just grueling and miserable. So we don't want to push people or kids to this level ever. We want it to be improve your strength, make a challenge, but don't make it so grueling and miserable that they don't want to come back. And then always help them with their, with hope. Hey, once we get that, we could get to this and then we could get to that. And I think you can do this. And we just have all this hope of where they can go and that helps fuel the motivation. So you want to always show them that you are trying to help them reach their goals. So they want to get to level seven. They want to get this. So here's what you need to do. And I see that you could do that if you come and do this or you want to do that you know, work hard on this, I see you being able to do it. So you're giving them hope. And a lot of kids like to do things a little too hard for them, but that's their ego. They want to be known as the person who's doing this really difficult skill. So we want to say, okay, but we have to keep you safe. So we have to do these lead ups and we're not in the fight with you to say, you can't do that. How stupid of you is it is for you to think you should do that. We're here to say, here, here's the steps you need to do to get there. We're not against your goal. So what happens when a kid has talent but doesn't have any real desire to do the sport? So we do have kids like that in our gym where the parent wants them to do it and you're like, do you want to do this? So it's really, really difficult, but for we to say that you have to quit the sport. So we try to make them feel positive. We try to do games. We try to do fun activities, things that make their time enjoyable here, not just about achievement. 
Uh, but it is really hard when you have a kid that's super talented and you feel like you're kind of a failure because they don't want to work. Um, that's okay. That's their choice. You let them know, hey, I think you could do this and I see great things for you and you build them up, build them up, build them up. But if ultimately they don't really want to do it, you're just going to try to make them happy as they're going through their time in gymnastics. But what happens when a kid is always sick, in pain? Uh, sometimes it's not that real. You can tell because they can do something pounding on vault, but then they can't do something pounding that's a little easier on it because they don't like that event or whatever. So that, that happens all the time. What I say is it does not matter. Whatever they say hurts at the time, even if it makes zero sense, that's what you go with. You never know, and you have to always take the child's word as 100%. But if they're always getting sick, there's anxiety, there's stress, there's problems in other areas of their life or in the gym if, if you have a stressful environment. And so you want to make sure that you're reducing that anxiety and stress, and you're trying to help them cope better with their time in the sport. So if that's happening over and over and over again, it's a little too much on them. So your attendance at your gym, it can be really if you eye-opening. If you see really low attendance, there's probably something wrong. What if your kid uh, acts disrespectfully to you or ignores you or sabotages your assignment, talks bad about you to the other kids, and he's kind of stirring up a lot of problems? What should you do? Like, how, how do you deal with that kid? And what I say is I always try to go over and above and beyond for the kids who are acting out the worst. And because they say that bad behavior is the language of the wounded. So the ones who are really hurting inside, they act out a lot more than the kids that um, really have a stable home life or, you know, they're feeling really good about themselves. So when they're acting out, then I would try to bring them and say, hey, what's going on? Is there something that we could do differently? What do you not like my assignment? What should we do? Should we change it up? Um, I think that's a really important thing to do to say, hey, I really care about you. Do you, you want to not do this one or what? What is it? Instead of just like, oh, look how she's not doing her assignment again. She just doesn't respect me and look what's going on. You know, that's not as good. What if the parent says they want you to push their kids? What would you do? So many of the coaches I've talked to, they're like, well, they want me to push them. So I'm going to push them because they're paying the bills. And I do not subscribe to that. 100%, I try to educate the parents that this is the kid's sport, that pushing implies they do not have choice. And we do not think it is a job of a coach to push. Push means you don't have control. And as the athlete, we want them to be fully in control. And you give motivation, you give guidance, you give safety, you do all these things that try to encourage them to get to their best, but you do not ever push. So we talk to the parents a lot about that because the more that the parent is involved in your pushing, the less it becomes their sport. And you do not reach success. We, we don't have the kids who it's pushed by someone else actually end up making it really far in the sport because it has to be their thing. Some new ideas. This is for more for older kids. The, the older the kid is, the more you do these things. So, um, we set up our rotation as a meal. We always talk about this. It's kind of an old thing, but um, we do our appetizer, which is the warm up. You know, some coaches go in there and say, okay, do your passes. Well, their legs aren't fired up. They're not ready. They're going to do really bad uh, layouts or low, low tumbling at first. So you got to get an appetizer, warm them up and get them ready to go. Their main course is say, we're going to do one full routine on floor. Maybe we're doing it um, with passes on the rod floor or extra on tumble track or, or endurance, whatever the assignment is. Then the side dishes are going to be maybe those little drills or conditioning items that are going to help those skills. And then the dessert is maybe a game or secondary motivation, try to get all marks off the board or try to get cards flipped or whatever the motivation is, uh, or an Instagram show turn, whatever the, the dessert is. But what I want to try to do is after you're relaying whatever the assignment is, always, 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 we're going to try to do this in our gym all the time, if anyone would like to change any part of this assignment for any reason, and including the reason is, I don't want to do these. I hate this skill. I don't want to condition. Whatever the reason is, please come up to me and we'll switch it. Now, you do need to have them involved, uh, involve you in the decision because you have to make sure the kid is going to be safe. And then you might give suggestions here or there. But my last thing is 
almost every single request granted uh, asked by the athlete should be granted like literally almost every single one now if it's a little beyond their ability and they can get hurt of course you're going to say well let's make sure you can do this this and this before you do that but yes you can work on on getting that and i almost always do that now i try to guide them obviously to what they requires they need for their level and what's going to help them do the best in competition but almost always grant their request because when it's their idea they're going to do a way better job the athlete needs to be your partner so why do we need that they they have to have input or we have these problems so say they're uh you're pushing them to do this or do that and you're the authoritarian coach and you're in charge and you're the smart one anyway but they have this major fear they have this major fear that is dangerous so they can crash on something because you don't even realize they have this major fear so we have to have their input also with pain or injuries you can't feel what a kid is going through you can't feel how tired they are you can't feel anything about what they're doing so they may be pushing through something that turns into a very uh, bad situation so you need their you need to be their partner with them so also how do they promote your gym out of the gym do they talk negatively about they they made me do the worst assignment and they were, didn't even care my foot was hurting or do they say oh my my coaches are so supportive and they're just trying to help me with my goal so they can be out there promoting positively or negatively about you or your gym so we want to try to get kids to have that good feeling so when they're talking about you and their sport they uh, are talking about it positively instead of they love to talk about how hard something was. So if something's too hard and you see it in their face, please stop them from that conditioning or that situation and try to talk to them about it and say, hey, do we need to modify this? This might be a little bit too hard. Also, culture overall, we had the whole Larry Nassar problem. Why did that all happen? Why was there so little talk about what things were going on? Because the culture was shut up, be a good girl and do as you're told. Now, if your culture is shut up, be a good boy or girl and do as you're told, then there are going to be things you don't know about. It's, it's every organization I've ever been in, things go on that we don't, people don't know about. When you don't know about something because a kid is afraid to speak up, you're going to have a big problem at your gym. Building the relationship is one of the most important things for any mistakes that you possibly might make. So what if you happen to say something inappropriate or hurtful to a, a coworker or to a parent or to a kid, and you just kind of did something really dumb? You know, everybody says things like that. They make a mistake. If you have a relationship ahead of time with that kid or the coach or the parent, you can apologize and it's forgiven. If you say something that's really inappropriate or hurtful, they could take it further if they cannot stand you and you have a bad relationship and they're just out to get you and they're angry. So we want to watch out for that. What if you get crazy angry? What if you just lose it and you just lost your temper completely? The only way to build that, to, to have that not become a problem later on is to build your relationship. And if the relationship is strong, you can get angry at somebody and you can apologize for that. I think that's not professional to get crazy angry and I've done it in my past for sure, but People are human and they get upset. So we want to try to build the relationship so that way, if you do lose it, you can apologize and move on. What if you make an assignment that's not good for them? So you, you kind of messed up. You taught them a skill that they shouldn't be doing. It's not good for them. Uh, they could end up getting hurt on it, you know, and there's harm to them. Those, all of those things can be forgiven when they you show that they that you care about the kid. So. I just can't tell you how important it is to build the relationship with the parent, with the kid, with the coach, that whoever you're dealing with. So that way, if something goes wrong, they can forgive that situation and not sue you or badmouth you online or take all these actions that make your life miserable as well. So make sure that that also goes with the whole feelings department, but build the relationship and you can end up in a way better position and not dealing with the horrible dramas of lawsuits or, or other problems, you know, with, with uh, staff or with kids, with parents, you know, that take up so much of a, a gym school's time. So that's the end of our, my presentation, but most important to remember about this entire thing is feelings, building relationships, 
showing you care about the kid because with that, everything else can fall into place. I also think uh, one more important thing is gymnastics is such a difficult sport that if you can be humble in what you do or don't know about it and ask a ton of questions, I still am amazed by what I don't know. And um, every 10 years, I'm like, wow, I can't believe I didn't know that. Uh, 10 years ago, and then I'm like, what don't I know now that I'll know in another 10 years? So really important that you're humble, and you ask questions, and we try and help every kid individually. Thank you so much for watching this, and uh, please email me at jimcast at jimcast.com if you have any questions.